Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Google Rod Torres in discussion with Skips Dennis Shaw. Thanks, Rob. Thanks for being here. Uh, I know you've been around for a couple hours observing things or making some deals. I don't know what, but we're glad to have you here. Uh, don't forget Slido. Bail me out with some questions at the end. Appreciate that. Good ones. <laughs> um, so I have to tell you, uh, well, our subject is travel marketing, marketing in an assistive world. And I have to tell you, a funny thing happened to me. Um, I, was, I decided to... Um, you know, re do some research to prepare for this session. Believe it or not, I researched these questions. And I took out my laptop and I Googled Google Home. And up pops a chat window. And uh, I'm saying, wow, I get, to, I get to talk with the search engine. I've always wanted to do that. So there's a woman on the other end of the chat. I'll call her Gretchen to protect the innocent. And uh, she asked me, where are you from? I say, I'm from, no, I think she, um, she said, you're from the US, right? And I said, yes. Uh, but I said, I'm visiting Berlin. She said, is that in Australia? <laughs> so I said, no, it's in Germany. Um, and then I wanted to ask her, the, you know, um, the reason the chat came up is I wanted to ask her, um, is it to my advantage to personalize my results in Google Home? And uh, she answered, if you are worried about your privacy, you don't need to worry because Google secures your personal information and I assure you, no one else can ac access your information through a Google Home. So should I take Gretchen at her word? Is, uh, is Google Home an ad-free zone, or is my data safe? Well, so a couple of things. I mean, absolutely your data is safe, and we take data user privacy very, very serious. And so I think the question she was asking is, you know, over time, am I getting a better experience from home through uh, machine learning and personalization. Personalization. Right, that's what I was asking her. Absolutely, yeah. but she's telling you, which is a question today in this environment we're living: is 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 my data personal, and are you really sharing it with anybody? And the answer is absolutely not. We're not, but we're using that information to learn more about you, to provide you yourself a personalized information, and you control that information. So over time, you're going to become much more comfortable asking her, uh, or him, or right. someone, um, any type of question using language, natural language. In fact, you know, from the devices overall, the assistant, not just the home device, but over 70% of all of our queries to the assistant now are through natural language. Right. So people are getting very comfortable asking. And somebody said earlier, it's much easier just to free flow your question versus having to type something in. It takes a lot longer. But do you think that people are really going to, um, you know, research hotels, try to find a hotel near their business meeting the next day, uh, you know, research flights, look for an Airbnb through voice? Think about it, certainly in travel. How did we used to book everything in travel? Through voice, right? 10 years ago, I don't think anyone would have thought that this little thing would have more computer, I, I learned this this week, I was at an airline supposing airline, more computer power than the Apollo spacecraft had sending the moon. That's amazing. So if you think about, this was only was less than 10 years old, we're absolutely gonna be using voice for it. And I think for a lot of people, we already are for some things. We may not be actually booking a hotel, but we're certainly asking about, you know, how close is it to my hotel to the, to the um, meeting? You know, what's the weather gonna be like? What should I pack? I know many people that are using all of that today. Mm -hmm. And there uh, is one of the main applications like looking up your flight information or what would you say the, the main utility of it is at this point? Well, I mean, I think it is asking questions like, you know, what restaurants which should I go to? What is the weather like? Um, what's the major news event happening of the day? In travel, people are asking flight times. Is my flight on time? Um, and there are certain people that do repeat trips that are asking them to, you know, rebook, look at rebooking a trip that I take or a hotel that I stay in all the time. And once it learns that is you go to New York every other week, you always stay at the Westin Times Square. I'm sure you want to stay there again here's what's available, right? and that's happening. And what do your advertising partners need to know about voice? Well, I mean, I think they need to understand that they should be developing content for voice. Mm -hmm. You know, like you said, is there really an advertising opportunity now? 
there isn't necessarily huge advertising now, but there will be. I mm -hmm. mean, it certainly is something that we have to look into and that everyone's looking into because it's very different than being able to provide multiple recommendations through desktop or mobile. Right. Voice, you're looking for the one relevant personalized result that's right for you so you can get on with it. Yep. So we have a lot to do and so certainly we're looking and learning a lot about it. Mm -hmm. So speaking of data, um, the European privacy regulations are coming into effect next month. You have Google Home, you have Google Trips, you have Google ho Hotels, Google Flights. How do things change for you with the, with the new regulations? Well, you know, for us, things don't necessarily change. I and mean, we've always taken data very, very, and privacy very seriously. And certainly that comes with advertising as well. And I think everyone in this room realizes that a lot of what we do on the web uh, is funded through advertising. But at the same time, we, wanna, we all want to make sure that advertising works and it's relevant and that we're not just spamming people with the wrong type of advertising. So, you know, we're f fully, you know, complying, obviously, but helping our advertisers learn how to comply as well mm -hmm. through, you know, first, first form of the user and making sure they understand the controls they have over their data and privacy and that it's fully transparent and that our advertisers understand that too and, and what needs to happen. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we don't want, I don't think anyone really wants um, data to be shared that uh, individuals don't want shared. Right. But at the same time, almost everyone in this room, if you ask them, at least 70% would say if, if you could be provided a personalized experience or travel experience, would you go back to that provider? And they would all say, absolutely. And I want that provider to provide me a more personalized, relevant experience. But you don't think there's a backlash against that at this point? Um, I don't, well, I don't necessarily think there will be a, a backlash. I think we just, some, some bad players out there might have gotten a little bit lazy in this. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what's happening. And we have to make sure that we catch up with it and say, hey, that's wrong. We all need to make sure that we're looking out for users' data and privacy. Are you ready to make some news? Are you ready to announce Google, the online travel agency. <laughs> so, I mean, you appeared on CNBC in the U.S. in 2016, and you were asked, will Google become an online travel agency? And you said, never say never. So, uh, when is this going to happen? <laughs> I think somebody else today already used never say never, so I don't have to do that. Um, it's funny you ask that question, because I've been at Google now about 12 years, coming on 12 years, and some of you might know I came from Expedia, and I think that was the, I think a lot of people thought I was coming from Expedia to start an OTA at Google. And now it's been 12 years and still no OTA. And I'm here to say, you know, we are very, very happy being the trusted place people go to search for now very relevant and personalized travel information. And again, we want to make sure that we're providing that information regardless of where you are in your journey. Mm -hmm. High up the funnel dreaming or, you know, in destination and experiencing. And we don't absolutely believe at this point we need to transact to make that happen. As a connector, we believe the more information, the better results we can provide to our users, the travelers, the better qualified leads that we can provide to all of you. And we feel really comfortable that that's what we want to continue doing. And I think we've got a lot of work to do as well. I mean, I think we've done a great job on Google Flights, but I think we have a long way to go on hotels, et cetera, to really make sure that that experience is really something that everybody in this room would want to always go and use. When people ask me about uh, whether Google become an OTA, I always tell them, they got a pretty good travel business going right now. Why would they want to ru ruin that? But you are doing uh, more bookings, right? Uh, bookings for hotels, booking for, bookings for flights. Well, so book on Google, we facilitate, but the, right. the merchant of record is still the partner, it's not us, so that's transferred. So some people think of it that way, because we are facilitating the booking on our site to make it easier, especially through mobile, for a lot of partners that haven't, um, haven't had the time or, prioritize, or ability to prioritize you know, improving the speed on their sites. We're like, well, we wanna help you convert higher. We know that speed matters. Book on Google can help facilitate those um, transactions. Right. Even if you don't become an OTA, when are you going to string everything together? You have all these, the, all these pieces. Hopefully um, soon. If it was up to me, it would have been yesterday. Um, Why? How, how would that help the business? Uh, well, hopefully, again, that would go to if people understood that they could go to Google for 
any place they were in the journey, mm -hmm. hopefully more people it would grow the, grow the pie is really what we hope. But uh, you know, we, we absolutely talk about this a lot and think about ways that we can seamlessly coordinate the product so people actually um, attribute the different products to Google and what we're doing. Uh, and right now, I would arguably, they're not. I mean, I think a lot of people try, how many people use Google Flight Search? Anybody out there? I mean, a few of you. I mean, I think it's, it's become a really good, popular product. But it's not the same about the others. But I would say my favorite product is the Trips app. And I'm mm -hmm. sure very few of you know about the Trips app, but it's so cool. I mean, you know, I knew, forgot all about where I was staying until I got here in the taxi. I'm like, ah, oh, the Trips app, pull it up. Of course, immediately it pulls up where I was going. And then I said, well, what's, what should I see on my way from the airport to this hotel? And it popped up the one thing and said, here, this is what you've got to see. And I didn't even think about it. I thought, mm -hmm. that's pretty cool. But is it part of the overall plan to, to put all the pieces together? It is. I mean, we do want to connect the tissue at some point in time. Now, there hasn't been a real agreement yet on how that happens because mm -hmm. I still think that there's a lot of work. And if my peer that was head of product that spoke with you before, Richard or Oliver were here, they would say that, you know, we're really working on improving some of the products today and we mm -hmm. still have some ways to go and we've got a lot of ideas. But at the end, we want to make sure that people realize that we do have products that really meet all parts of the journey. Right. Um, I remember at a forum last year in London, um, you guys announced that uh, you were doing a test of uh, vacation packages in Europe. Uh, how's that progressing? What have you learned? Where is it going? Well, I think, and we certainly heard a lot about it today, and everyone and their brother's getting into it. And I think it's, everyone's getting into it because it's very important. And if you want to be a trusted partner that is where people go to search for travel, you really have to have all product available. And we certainly believe that, and we certainly believe vacation rental fills part of that need. The problem that a lot of people face is, how do you define vacation rental? And it's very difficult just to take a vacation rental and intersperse it with your normal hotel results because it's not necessarily a hotel result mm -hmm. and you can confuse the customer. So we are really working right now on, okay, what, what do we need to do to make sure the customer really understands what they're getting? So it will help everybody in this industry. So we're testing now with a couple of partners. You can find vacation, you can always find vacation with the links, but we're testing it through hotel ads product as well and, and learning. And it's really a learn and test right now, but we absolutely believe this is a big part, part of our future and will be in, in months and years to come. But how will that affect the business? Um, you know, are the costs for clicks for um, for vacation rentals, are they going to be as, as big as for hotels? Well, they'd be very similar depending on what you're, you know, what you're looking for. So, mm -hmm. uh, You mentioned Google Trips, and uh, I was looking at it yesterday, and I see uh, you know, I can get my 20% my discount from Get Your Guide uh, in Google here. Trips. <laughs> um, why don't you just buy them? <laughs> I mean, if you want to He's scale up your, your trips business, Airbnb is doing it, you know, Booking.com is doing, doing it, it. Some, you know, some of your best friends, um, you, could afford, you could afford Get Your Guide. Um, we, we could, possibly, <laughs> yes. Um, we could afford. So we're like, you know, I think what even Tato said earlier, he says, you know, we're always looking at opportunities. And so we're always evaluating opportunities. I mean, that's another space that we're doing some tests right now in as well. Obviously, the trip's out, but we've got some other tests going through um, our innovative lab that's like looking at some different opportunities in the space. It's a ripe space where no one has a very large percentage of the market, and we know that. And we know that... Uh, you know, again, what they say for every $3 spent, you know, every $1 in hotel, every $3 spent on in-destination activity. It's where people experience travel. And so we want to be the, uh, the provider of that information for them. We don't necessarily need to be the booker, like I said, but we want to make sure that we are providing the relevant information to people when they're in the destination. And over time, that could mean, you know, partnering even closer with some of these, these guys that are out there. You know, Get Your Guide is not, is not the only partner we have. We have quite a few of the partners that are working through the TRIPS app. And I think you asked the question. I mean, it's very small scale right now. And yeah. we're just really testing it to see, okay, is the user spending any time on that part of the, the app? And are they booking this? Are they finding it relevant? Or is, it, is the content good? Mm -hmm. And so um, we're learning a lot. So stay tuned on that one. I don't... You know, again, we definitely are taking it seriously. Um, the whole activities, tour and activities are experiences space. I guess that's what I'm walking away with, that it's now called experiences. Right. <laughs> experiences. Um, Your favorite. <laughs> so, um, 
you know, a bunch of travel companies are, um, are tilting towards TV and brand advertising because they want to, they want to own the customer. You know, they don't want to have to go through Google in order to get their customers. So Booking.com and Trivago and TripAdvisor are all tilting towards TV. So you're the advertising guy. What are the, you know, what's wrong with that strategy? There's absolutely nothing wrong with that strategy. I mean, they absolutely should be continuing to build their brand to build their relevance. relevance. I mean, I cannot disagree with anybody's strategy of how we, they would go after wanting their customers to come direct. The reality is, and most of them said that it's very difficult to get 100% of your leads or travelers to come direct. You need distribution channels, you need marketing channels, and I think uh, that will play out. Uh, and I think we will continue to build our channel as a great, robust demand generator, and hopefully we'll continue to provide very efficient price, you know, effective leads for these people. Like, you know, Booking.com said, we're still a very reliable partner for them, and hopefully we'll continue to be for a long period of time. But that said, I would hope that uh, they would continue to build their brand. Now, I would love them to do a little of that brand building with YouTube and video, so since we all know that's where the millennials are watching their well, television Well, they're playing there days. too, I'm sure. So, you know, so. Yeah. So, um, speaking of channels, uh, I guess people that are, that advert, you know, hotels and airlines that advertise in Google are aware of this. Maybe other people aren't. Uh, but you consider Google Search and Google Hotels, for example, as two different channels. So how do you view the differences between them? You know, do I advertise in, you know, AdWords or do I advertise in Google Hotels? So just to make sure everyone understands, from a user perspective, we don't think, consider them as two channels. We just consider them as a result. And depending on what your search query is, we want to provide you with the best result I mean, from a possible. I mean, from a but customer. But from an advertising yeah. partner perspective, you know, you know, right now, it really is, you know, where you are in the funnel as well. Um, if you're, you know, and it, it search, as we know, is really keyword based, whereas hotel ads are deeper down the funnel is not necessarily keyword based, it's property based. And so it's really a different customer and what they're looking for. And on the hotel ad side, you know, we provide a lot more content about those properties. And it's, you know, we continue to add different content and will continue to add different content as we learn more about what the customer is looking for. Again, to really help really, really want, when somebody clicks on a hotel ad hotel, we want them to book that right away with one of our partners. And so we want to provide them pretty much with everything they would need to know so that that one click to your site, they're booking and the conversion rate is much, much higher. So we'll see the play out between the two. Right now, you know, certainly search is still our bread and butter. And that's where, I mean, I, everyone needs to be playing in. Um, but they're differently, and I think people are starting to, you know, look at both. Um, a little bit differently. They certainly look at hotel ads more of how they look at Meta and as, how they look at Kayak and Trivago and, and of course AdWords is really still more core search and how they looked at us in the past. I've heard you describe search as uh, a place where, where um, consumers could basically um, be paired or with relevant ads. And I've also heard you describe Google Hotels as, as more of a content play. You know, that's where I can go read the reviews, I can see the maps, that you have Q&As, uh, you have photos of the hotel so, rooms. Isn't that like turning things on its head? Uh, search used to be the place where you could get your organic results. I could see TripAdvisor reviews, I could, um, I could see Yelp reviews. But now if I want content, I have to go to Google Hotels instead of Google Search. Well, as you know, consumer behavior has changed. We really haven't talked about this, but this is really impetus. This is the whole move to mobile. And if you think about it, that move to mobile, if in, in primarily you're doing a search for this stuff on mobile, you, you don't have the ability, I mean, you can, to flip back and forth from site page to site page, which you really were accustomed to do when you were searching for a hotel on desktop. And so basically what we're trying to do is bring that all up to one spot where you don't have to go back and forth looking for different content, different reviews because it's all right there in front of you. So hopefully we're bringing the information that mission critical for you to make decision in one spot. And like I said, for mobile, it works really extremely well because hopefully you have everything you need, mapping map of where it's located. Like you said, different reviews, whether, you know, we, now we incorporate TripAdvisor with Booking, Expedia, our own reviews are there so you can click and see. Um, so it makes a lot of sense. Uh, and hopefully, again, it's providing a better search experience versus the opposite. Mm -hmm. And that's really, and, and I think from a user perspective, we're seeing that. I mean, they're with, you know, hitting it with their click that this is working. So 
Um, we'll see. We're continuing to test and iterate on that product for sure. We only have a minute left for this part of uh, the session here. Um, then we'll get to the questions. But you recently made a change to your algorithms in Europe for Google Hotels where um, you, you know, your, your largest advertisers are featured and then sometimes the lowest rates, users have to click on view more rates to find the lowest rates. Doesn't seem like a, a, a good user experience, but I assume you're making more money that way. So what was the business reason for doing that? Well, so the, I think what you're talking about is the view more rates yep. and the change there. So just to be clear, there always was view more rates. What we added was view more rates from. And so now since, so we add pricing. And what you'll find is not always the lowest price property shows up above the fold or in, in the four pack. It may be in the view more. And we did that simply because, you know, the, the, the top four is an auction. And so it's an auction. It's not just based on price. It's, you know, based on user, a bunch of things that go on the algorithm. And, but we also wanted to make sure people understood that there may be a better price or a lower priced option if they looked, if they clicked the view more. And so this has helped with that because now people, if they want to find another option, like maybe a lower price, they know it's there. Whereas before they may not hit view more. And, and may not realize that. So it was really to add more transparency to all of the different uh, partners that were actually playing in the hotel ads auction. And it actually has helped that. The click-through rate now um, on that view more is, is much higher than it was now that we added rates. Hmm. Okay, let's go to the audience questions here. How do ads work regarding voice? Okay to have several ads in a list of 10, but over voice I want max three options. Will one of those be in an ad? That's what I was sharing earlier. I think we have a lot to learn because you're right. I mean, you can't have a list of 10 ads um, <laughs> when you ask for, I want this, and voice comes back, well, here's 10 options for you. Pick one. You want one or two, right? That'll be the easiest way. So we're not there yet, and we're just we're testing, um, and we'll continue to test on what is the right result through voice, but we haven't really learned what's that. We do know that, you know, the desktop and the mobile results page that we're used to is not going to work for voice. A question from Jeremy. Isn't Google afraid to lose its image as trusted partner once it starts offering its own content? Well, you've been offering your own content for, for years now. Yeah, I mean, I think a trusted partner is, and everyone looks defines it how they want, but I mean, we look at trusted partner as you trust us that the content they're providing is aggregate, real, and all-encompassing for you to help make a choice. Um, and certainly, as a connector, we want to do that. And then again, as an advertising partner, we want to get those people that are interested in your product and services to you as quickly as possible. And I think that's why offering content and including partners' content in that is helping that. It's almost only helping make the search result more robust. And that's really, so no, I, you know, we're not necessarily afraid. We, we believe what we're doing is really improving the results that we're providing to our partners and users. Anonymous has a question for you. How do we better measure the ROI today across the travel journey where mobile is predominant in the consumer's life? Well, you can't just evaluate on a last click model. I'll tell you that much, and a lot of people do, which is because that's the way we've been prone to. But I think we have to just make sure that we're really looking at a multi-touch attribution model and that we're looking at these different um, touch points along the journey to purchase because, uh, as most of you know, and I don't have to walk you through this, but you know, people do have multiple touch points, and some of them are, may start right now on a, a smartphone and end up purchasing on the desktop and if you had no idea about the smartphone you would have never attributed anything to it and I think that that's really what it comes down to is really rethinking um, how you're looking at this attribution model and really looking at your return on investment from a holistic perspective. It's tough but this is the question that my team has or is partnering with all the time and has discussions with all the time and there are new products out there that are helping um, you know but it's nascent to some extent so we're still it's a work in progress. That's really how I would look at it. This isn't really fair, but Anonymous is dominating the questions. They really are. Is What's the afraid? end game for Google Hotel ads? What is the end game yeah, for hotel it, ads? I guess it um, depends when. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like I said, for this year, you're just going to see a, we've got a lot of um, 
a lot of product development uh, or the roadmap um, to improve and add a lot more content into that to make that decision more robust, uh, or I mean that ad unit more robust. So you're going to see some some new things coming, and I think that's really what this year is all about: is really making sure that product is the best it can be. What happens after that? You know, I don't know. Um, I, I'll just this is coming from me because I've thrown it out there, but I think that there should be an opportunity to white label some products like this someday if they're really that great. Mm -hmm. Now, you just heard this from me. This is not coming from Google that we're planning that. But um, I mean, if you think about it, things like that, if the product's so good, let other people utilize it. Just like we did with search and the search. You know, search is an affiliate product. 21 seconds. Uh, we had a question from Zachary. Uh, whatever happened to Google destinations, does it still exist? And absolutely still to exists. Yes, that's really our top of the funnel, you know, dreaming phase. And if you type in Berlin vacations on your smartphone right now, the destinations product will surface and will help you understand what you should do or not do in Berlin while you're here. Um, it's like the other products. Like I said, until we really seam them together in, like you said, the first question, right. um, it's hard to know, but it's there and we're learning a lot about it and, um, and a lot of people use it. But like it's, it's core search, really people don't realize that that's a destination product, which right. normally they shouldn't. They should just hope that this experience that they received by entering into the destination product help them make a better decision on where they should go. Rob, they're going to kill me because we went over the time because I last, asked you that last question. But that's uh, life in the uh, All right. City.